What is going on everybody? Hope everyone is doing well. Cody from Motorcycle MD, and in this video I'll be showing you guys some really helpful tricks when it comes to splicing into a harness, trying to steal some power to wire a license plate light or LED lights or whatever. I'm going to show you guys some really helpful techniques when it comes to soldering, heat shrinking, making a double or triple connection off of one wire, how to best seal that, as well as learning how to use good technique with some of the tools that I use in the field, some really helpful ones that I can't wait to show you guys. All the tools and parts and stuff that I use here will be in the description below. I use these daily in the field, and I really think that these tools will definitely bring you some more value to when it comes to your wiring jobs, as well as just some parts that are really helpful. So let's do it. <laughs> super basic then we'll kind of move into some a little bit more trickery that we can do with the wiring so some of the most common tools that I have that I will use all the time is going to be obviously a soldering gun which I have this awesome propane one from I R O D A Iroda and I love it because you can carry it anywhere that you need to it fills with the butane uh, filler stuff just some regular solder this is it's like 0.8 really really thin stuff I don't care really what kind of solder you get um, as far as thicknesses and that kind of stuff. Electrical tape, I always recommend getting some kind of brand name electrical tape. Scotch makes some amazing stuff. They got uh, 33 plus, which is great. Super 88, uh, a little bit more expensive. Um, just stay away from the super cheap stuff. It's garbage. Uh, trust me, it's garbage. This stuff's way more pliable and it uh, spins better around the wires and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't leave that goopy, disgusting stuff all over the place. This is something that I'm going to show you guys to some liquid tape. Um, it works really well when you have multiple different things going on on one wire and maybe it's a split one and you don't want to just put heat shrink over it because they'll leave a gap or whatever. Liquid tape works great for certain situations, not necessarily a need. Um, these are a really interesting pair of pliers that you may or may not have seen, wire strippers. They grab onto the wire and they actually just split and pull the insulation off of them and they're great. I love these. It's way better than just trying to fight a wire and rip them off. And then I have, of course, just some regular wire strippers as well. I'll show you guys a good technique for using these too. Okay, so soldering. So soldering is definitely one of the better techniques when it comes to making two wires join together and last quite a while. Okay, but there are obviously some downfalls when it comes to soldering. Soldering overheats the wire sometimes if you're not careful. It makes a very hard and somewhat brittle type of connection um, that can easily break if you're trying to solder something that goes into a bend. Uh, it may not be the best type of connection you want to make. Typically, I want to make soldering joints in something that's going to be straight and it's going to stay straight for the majority of its life. So I'll be using some 18 gauge wire. This is typically what you're going to find on your wiring harnesses when it comes to very general wiring needs, turn signals, anything inside the headlight, that kind of stuff. So we're just going to take these two pieces of wire and we're going to join them together with soldering and then a heat shrink over top of it. Okay, so one technique with your pliers, whenever you're shipping the wire back, don't go straight onto it, okay? Try to go at an angle, and once you cut that angle and you turn the pliers, that actually separates that insulation just a little bit easier. It's a lot easier to strip it instead of going straight on like this. And then really trying to pull until it strips. It's just a little bit different technique that you might find helpful. Just going at an angle, Turn the pliers, that kind of strips that insulation a little bit, then it usually just comes right off. So what we're going to do is we're going to join these two things together. But if you're working with a harness, obviously, you may not have wires like this ready for you to solder them in. So you may be working with a harness that's already attached, and now you have to solder in a new wire off of it. Okay, obviously, you don't want to forget to put your heat shrink on before you solder that wire. So... I have this cheap little bundle of heat shrink, multiple different sizes already pre-cut. I think I got it off Amazon. XFH, I don't care. Heat shrink is heat shrink. You can do what, whatever you want as far as what you go with, but I like to have either black and red or green or something like that to kind of highlight which wires do what. Red obviously being hot, black or green being ground. So I don't need to put my heat shrink on right away because I have open wires. So we will take these, join them together, I don't care if you split them down the middle or whatever. Um, it doesn't matter to me. You can kind of, you can 
join them together like this and do a little Y or whatever you want to do, or you can just wrap them around. It does not matter to me which way you do it. We'll do this trick. Just gonna wrap one end real tight and then wrap the other one and try to keep it all inside of the insulation on both sides. Okay, this is a tool I was talking about earlier. I like it because it's all built into one. Make sure your tip's nice and clean on it. Turn this on, light it. It's that easy. Once the flame goes out, the burner inside will start to glow red and heat the tip all up. Okay, sometimes it works better downward, but I can also adjust how hot it is, which is even better. So I'm not trying to overheat the insulation around the joint. You'll know when you're overheating it because the insulation will begin to bubble and then it looks like crap. So I want to just get it just hot enough to where my solder starts to go into it, back my heat off, and then just keep kind of feeding this in. Then I'll go underneath it and it'll kind of pull all that stuff in. So we'll start up top and I'll start waiting until the tip is hot enough to melt the solder, which it is now. So it's kind of resting on top. I'm going to feed this in right beside it. So once it's going into the wire, I'm going to keep feeding it, back it off. My solder stuck to it now. I'm going to go underneath it. And I can start feeding it in, pull it off, feed it in. And then I'm done. Okay? You almost want to find this happy medium between hot and cold where the solder is sticking and not sticking because then you can really build it up onto it instead of just overheating the crap out of it and then it starts to drip out the bottom of the wire. We don't want that. Got the whole connection nice and soldered in. Okay, it's not going to go anywhere. Now you'll see where the hard parts are in this wire. The solder really soaks in underneath the insulation as well, and that's what I'm talking about. So you're trying to put this around the bend. This can become brittle, the solder does, and it can break the wire. That's the one thing that you need to be careful with when it comes to soldering. Now you've extended that point of how brittle or where the wire can break. But we want to do this in like a straight line, then we'll run some insulation around it. Okay, heat shrinks really straightforward. Throw this on there once it cools down. I like to kind of spin this like I'm screwing it on. Makes it kind of go over that a little bit easier. All right, then we just cook this nice and even until we see it shrink. Doesn't take much. Okay, that's a good connection. Nice strong connection. That ain't gonna go nowhere. That, that's the best way to cover up your solder not just leave your wires wrapped around each other with some electrical tape. But what if we want to try to steal power from something? Let's say you have a uh, new LED license plate light that you want to put on your bike, okay? And you want it to be on with key on only, okay? Obviously, you need to find a wire that's going to be hot when the key is on. You don't want to go straight to the battery for anything, really. Key on is great. So we have a running light back there. Uh, maybe you have the original wiring for the license plate light. It all depends. But we want to take power from that and then make some type of Y joint. Okay, so we can kind of hook off of that and go into whatever accessory that we, we want to go to. So you can see here I've heat shrunk this. It's been soldered underneath it. I'm going to show you guys a cool technique to do that. So going off the same wire that we just heat shrunk, the cool thing about these strippers is that you can go onto the line somewhere in the middle of it. So let's say this wire is all hooked into the connectors and all that crap. You don't want to cut it off the connector just to steal power from it. You want to just open this up while it's still in the circuit, still in the harness. Okay, so you can gain access to it with these. Find the right gauge wire that you're working with on the, on the strippers. I can pull this and right in line, I can strip this and make a little spot for me to access. Normally, it's not going to open up this wide. It's because I have no end on here. But if this was all tied into something, you would get a little bit less access to the wires that are underneath the insulation. But regardless, now you've kind of snuck in uh, in the middle of the harness or in the middle of the wire where you can steal that power from. So this is a little bit too big. Okay, so that's probably more accurate of the amount of room that you'll be dealing with. All right, so now here is my wire. Let's say nice lit LED license plate light, okay? What I always do when I have the stock wire, power wire that I'm going to tap into, I don't like to just go straight onto it with my load wire. Okay, so let's say this is the power wire for the LED light. I don't like to just go onto this, solder it in, and then tape it up, and then you're good to go. I always like to make some kind of joint that, I, that will be removable, okay, because 
you never know when someone's gonna have to go back in there or take that license plate light off because they don't want it or it breaks or it goes bad. Um, now you have to cut the wire and then do this all over again when you can just make a quick disconnect connector with some kind of bullet connector, which I'll show you. So I'll take my wire, let's go ahead and strip it off so we have some meat. I don't really like the wire to just be kind of hanging off like this, okay? That looks kind of dumb. Um, you could do it if, it's, if you're laying the wire out in a certain manner. I usually like to run it alongside the other wire, okay? Um, and it's just the way that I do it. I don't care which way you go, that's just how I run it. So what I'll do here is the same technique before. I'll just take my new wire, kind of line up the insulation together, and start wrapping that new wire around. And now we've made a nice little joint for it. Okay, again, one of the wires is still in the harness. This will be our new jumper wire to take power from it. All right, so let's go ahead and solder this one up. And if you're finding that the solder is not taking to one portion of the wire, it's likely because the coating of that wire itself has either been burnt up or the wire is very, very dirty and it's not accepting the solder. Okay, you need to keep cutting back or putting in new wire until you can get it to adhere to both sides of the wire, if that makes sense. Sometimes on stator connections, when uh, the stator goes bad and, or the connector melts and you want to just hard line the stator, you got to keep stripping back the wire until you don't see that black, dirty brown style of wire that's underneath the insulation. It's got to be nice and clean for that solder to stick to it. Okay, so we have a couple options that we can do. Okay, so we can electrical tape it. That's fine. If you, if you want to do that, um, use some good tape. We can do some heat shrink over top of this and then just make this insulation real tight together. That's then you're, you're only messing with these. Um, or we can use this liquid tape as well. I'll show you guys the liquid tape on a different connection. Um, but let's just go ahead and heat shrink it. And I'm gonna show you guys a technique when it comes to heat shrinking that may solve an issue that you'll run into when you're using the heat shrink light. All right, so obviously I have my smaller heat shrink that will fit great up onto the solder point, but it's too small to go onto these two other pieces. Okay, so I'm shrinking over just that in that soldered part because I can't get it to fit over the two. Then I'll take a larger piece and then go over top because now I have more meat here for the, for the heat shrink to clamp onto it because if you're just using a large piece over top of a small wire, you're going to be left with the heat shrink not shrinking enough. I've dealt with it before. Um, it just looks stupid. So double up on the heat shrink like this. Try to keep the heat even around it. And now you've made a really nice heat shrink connector, okay? Plenty of meat for it to hold on here, and you've sealed it twice. If you have good heat shrink, oftentimes there'll be like a little bit of a glue that kind of oozes out of here and kind of seals that in, but sometimes it doesn't. That's one of the downfalls of using that heat shrink when it comes to a double joint. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and pause right there. This is part one of a lot more information that I wanted to give you guys. I didn't wanna make this a 40 minute video, so I just wanted to split it up. I didn't wanna to cram too much information down your throat right away. So this is part one. Part two will be coming out on Tuesday, okay? I have a lot more tricks that I wanna show you guys with doing bullet connectors and insulating those style of systems, even if you don't have proper insulation readily available. More tricks to come, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Again, next Tuesday will be part two, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification button so you'll be notified when the new video comes out. So thank you so much for just hanging out and watching this. I hope it was helpful. Let me know what you learned in the comments below or what you may want to see next. Don't forget to subscribe to the mailing list. I do live Q&As once a month where I open the floor up and try to help you guys out. And I also have a free troubleshooting cheat sheet that I've made for you just for subscribing. Helps you diagnose certain systems of the bike that may be a little bit more confusing to you. I break them down to a way that you can understand them more. And if you enjoy the content that you see here on the YouTube channel, be sure to look into the Motorcycle MD Inner Circle membership. There I have hundreds of more videos for you that are not shown on here where I take my time and kind of deep dive into certain topics that you might find very interesting. 
motor overhauls, chassis, electrical suspension, all different types of stuff. The Inner Circle membership is an awesome community of riders who want more help with their bike and love to also help other people in need. I hope to see you there. Until then, as always, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys some quality tricks and tips for your next build or your daily rider. See you guys next time. Later.